Welcome into week nine of New Zealand's Men's National League. We're here at the Christchurch United Football Centre in Christchurch, where the home side, Christchurch United, welcome Kashmir Technical in a mouth-watering top of the table clash on a chilly old Friday evening in the Garden City. The thermometers read five degrees. The Met Service is telling us it feels a little more like two degrees, a light to moderate westerly, but very, very chilly here tonight. Let's look at the two sides, starting with Christchurch United. Head coach, of course, Paul Eiffel. Scott Morris is the goalkeeper. Look out for Daniel McClay, the Irishman sitting at the base of midfield. Daniel McLennan, the Scotsman, up front alongside Sonny Issa, the Nigerian centre forward. Jackson Cole, the 16-year-old, is on starting debut. And a few substitutes at the disposal of Paul Eiffel, should he decide to use them in the uh, second half of this match as the two teams take to the field here for Kashmir Tech. Coach Dan Schwartz has named a pretty experienced lineup. The back four of Tung, Stora, Schwartz and Richards have been around the footballing traps for a while, as has goalkeeper Danny Knight. Lyle Matheson, the South African, seven goals already this National League season. No Garvin Coglin tonight. He has been given a night off. So the uh, highly experienced Irishman not here to lead the line tonight for Kashmir Tech. These are the two standout teams in the Southern League. Our referee tonight is Ben O'Connell, assisted by Caleb Downs and Michael Love. Hayden McCabe there with the extra layer on is the fourth official. Christchurch United all in blue and Kashmir Tech yellow, green, and white tonight. Artificial surface here at the Christchurch Football Centre in Yoldhurst, Christchurch. Final words of encouragement for the two sides. You can see Kashmir Tech there. The yellow shirts, green shorts and white socks, all in blue, Christchurch United. Christchurch United played seven, won seven. 29 goals they've scored and six against for Kashmir Tech. Six games, six wins. They've also scored 29 goals and conceded just four. So perfect seasons for these two sides. Who's going to come out on top after 90 minutes here tonight? Final words of encouragement. Tom Schwartz with his back to camera there. And number six, the highly experienced captain of Kashmir Tech. He's been here before. And they're going to change ends. Christchurch United, all in blue, going to kick from right to left as we look here. Conditions actually pretty good for a game of football. Spectators might get a bit cold, but for the players, good lights here at the Christchurch Football Centre. Surface is one of the better artificial turfs going around. No expense spared here. So all things considered, an exciting game of football awaits us, we hope. Kashmir Tech are going to kick off, attacking the goal to our right. Referee just checking both sides have got 11. The nets are in place. The goalkeepers are OK. And Ben O'Connell gets us underway here in Christchurch. The two form teams, not just in the Southern League, but in the entire National League, going head-to-head -head here. Christchurch United. I guess you would almost say the new boys in recent terms, but a proud, proud history, of course. Kashmir Tech have been the preeminent team in the Christchurch region for several years now. And very, very keen to retain that crown. Early touch for Scott Morris and goal for Christchurch United. Jordan Spain, Blake Weston, Riley Grover, the teenager, and Ben Lapsley, the back four. In fact, there's a couple of brothers in action tonight with Benjamin Lapsley just on the ball now. The younger brother of Kashmir technical midfielder Sam Lapsley. So brother against brother divided loyalties for the Lapsley family here in Christchurch tonight. Although I understand that dad Glenn is the reserve team manager. Mum Cherie also involved in football. So a proud footballing family, the Lapsleys. Looking forward to seeing what plays out tonight. Here is... McClay. Daniel McClay, the 
Irishman, a pretty key member of this Christchurch United side, sitting at the base of their midfield. Spain looking to go along, but that one's going to roll all the way down to Danny Knight and goal for Cash Tech. You can see the corner flags there, not really fluttering to any great degree, so wind-wise we should be okay. You can see the hoodies and the, the woolen hats down in front of us here as uh, the crowd are rugged up against the elements. They love their football here in Christchurch. Just missing a football at the moment to continue to play with. Ball boys in action, no doubt, and we'll get it back. Here is Ben Lapsley. Sonny Issa has come all the way across to get involved. He's a pretty mobile sort of an attacking force. You won't see him sitting in that centre forward role. He will drop deep to get hold of the football. Long by Grover. Dealt with easily, though, by Cash Tech. And now, well, half an opportunity for them to get themselves into a, an attacking position. Furthest man forward is Kean Donkers in 12. No change, though, there. But Jacob Richards now looking to recycle. Taken away from Cash Tech. And Easter again, as you can see, he's dropped all the way over here to Christchurch's left wing. Taken off him, though, and... Again, the attack breaks up. Both teams are good passing sides. They love to be in control of the football. Christchurch United have probably had the better of the first three minutes or so. Given away, Cash Tech with a spray side. Just feeling one another out early in this game. These two teams, I'm sure, when the fixture list was published at the start of the season, immediately looked at the first opportunity to face one another. Of course, two, two teams from the Southern League will go into the championship round, joining teams from the central and northern parts of New Zealand in the championship round. Already it seems almost inevitable that these two will be the two who make their way out of the Southern League. Their closest challenges at the moment are Nelson Suburbs. Tom Schwartz deals with the latest long ball forward. Christchurch United using a mixture of approaches here. The long ball followed by some short passing. They certainly have had the better of things early in this one. Here is Captain Matt Todd-Smith. Wide left now to Lapsley. And to Issa. Looking to try and free up a teammate. He was hoping he'd get the run from McLennan there. And ball has gone behind for what will be the first corner of the contest. Christchurch United's mascot there. And a fine voice. Nice and warm under that. Woolly headgear. Corner taken. Cash Tech have got lots of numbers back. Flying header at the far post. First opportunity for Christchurch United. The delivery was towards the far post. There were plenty of bodies there for Cash Tech. Flying, and that might have been Blake Weston there coming up from the back with the diving header that flew wide of the post. So a warning shot across the bows of Danny Knight and goal for Cashmere Tech. Delivery was good, and Weston it was with the flying header looking to open the scoring for the home side. Once again, the cohesion not quite there yet for Kashmir Tech. You can see how cold it is with a couple of players with gloves on. Jacob Richards seizes upon this one. Ball across the area. Edge of the area and shot bangs into a defender. It was Spain, Jordan Spain there with the crucial block. Spain's gone across now to complete another piece of defending. He's a experienced player these days too, Jordan Spain. Pretty composed as well, but 
it is given away to Cash Tech, and they've got another opportunity perhaps to force home an advantage. Helped into the area, only half away. It's going to find its way out to Richards, and uh, well, you can see what he's trying to do, just hitting across the ball, looking for a bit of curve on the volley. Scott Morris saw it coming from a long way out from Jacob Richards. Untroubled, but first shot on goal fashion by the visitors here tonight. This is Grover, the teenager. Of course, you have to play two under-20 players from the start. In the National League, Riley Grover on the ball now is one of them for Christchurch United. The other is the 16-year-old on starting debut, Jackson Cole in 25, over on the far side of the front three. Foul on halfway, eventually spotted by Ben O'Connell. We might just have a brief stoppage here while the player is seen to. It's Lyle Matheson there, the... South African national. Seven goals already this season. Lyle Matheson, he's a pretty key part of this cash tech side. Seems to be up and running okay, so that's good news. Planted into the area by Stora. Away by Peterson for Christchurch United. is Todd Smith. He goes long looking for that run of McLennan. McLennan sprinting across now. The Scotsman to put pressure on. And I think he might have just caught the head there of Luke Tanga as he um, got that one away. Just off camera there. The referee just having a quick check on the health of Luke Tung as It almost looked as though McLennan had caught him. He seems to be okay. He's up here to take this throw. Gets it back from Matheson and gives it back to Lyle Matheson. Down the line looking for the run of a teammate. Cash Tech will have the throw. Tongue takes. Back it goes to Luke Tongue. Delivery not what he'd hoped for. And Christchurch United able to clear without any trouble at all. Mopping up there in the middle of the park, Fraser Angus in 18 for Kashmir Tech. Storer, he and Schwartz have played about a 1,000 games together at the back for Cash Tech. They really are one of the more experienced centre-back pairings going around. Grover all the way up in midfield. He quickly realises where he is, the centre-back, and retreats back into his more traditional position. Dropping in Todd Smith. He's a real box-to-box -box midfielder, Matt Todd Smith. You'll see him drop in alongside the back four to pick up possession. And then in a flash, he's down the other end, contributing to attacks. Kashmir Tech just letting Christchurch United have it in their own half. No danger to be had there. Oh, there was the call for no foul, no foul, no foul. And unfortunately, the foul did come. Angus on McClay. Once again, the delivery from the free kick was not exactly what was desired. But McClay gets another opportunity here for Christchurch United. Finds Issa out wide left. Faced by a couple of defenders. And Luke Tung does very, very well there to shepherd that one out under significant pressure from Sonny Issa. So round one of that particular contest goes the way of Luke Tung. Fantastic seasons for both of these two sides so far. Both negotiated their way safely through the first round of the Chatham Cup last weekend. Cash Tech beating Nomads 6-0. And a 6-0 win for Christchurch United over UC Football. So safely through to the next round there. And unbeaten league campaigns also. In fact, not even a point drop so far. So somebody's record is going to be blemished tonight. Plenty of early touches in this game for Luke Tung. Richards. And 
Donk is not able to keep it in for Kashmir Tex. It'll be Benjamin Lapsley again with the throw for the Blues. Issa, can he break away? He can and looks to set up McLennan who just saw it run away from him. I guess that's one of the perils of playing on this artificial turf is that the ball doesn't hold up in any particular fashion. It runs pretty true and pretty fast. McLennan had a go at it but was never going to catch up with it. A lot of the play for Christchurch United has been down this left-hand side. Haven't seen a heck of a lot of Jackson Cole at right wing yet for the home side. Lapsley goes down the left-hand side again. It's a chase this time for Peterson. Danny Knight deals with it. OK, although it hasn't been entirely cleared. Todd Smith now here's a chance perhaps for young Jackson Cole to make an impact, but didn't come off for him. He's got the gloves on as well over there. Young 16 year old starting debutant Jackson Cole. Cash Tech, of course, coached by Dan Schwartz, the brother of Tom Schwartz. He's got Dan Terrace, another highly experienced player from the Canterbury region as his assistant. Paul Eiffel, the Wellington Phoenix favourite of years gone by, is the director of football and head coach of Christchurch United. Eko Quainu is his assistant coach, formerly the head coach of Coastal Spirit. Well known around these parts, Eko Quainu, or Henry as he's often referred to. Speaking to Paul earlier in the week, and he said that uh, Henry is a huge part of what they do here at Christchurch United. You can see Paul Eiffel there over there, right of screen. He's all rugged up. Not a big fan of the cold, Paul Eiffel. Much rather be, I'm sure, in his native Barbados on nights like this. But then again, you'd never drag Paul Eiffel away from a game of football. Launched forward again by the home side, easily dealt with by the Cash Tech rear guard. Lapsley, clever in midfield to Matt Todd Smith. He's fouled, is he? No, says the referee. That looked to have clipped the legs, but it's taken away, and Peterson breaks forward. Here's Joel Peterson with the shot all the way along the carpet. Danny Knight, untroubled. But the intent was good from Joel Peterson. Looked as though Matt Todd Smith might have been fouled in the middle of the park. Play was allowed to go on, and Joel Peterson getting his shot away for Christchurch United. Approaching the 15-minute mark here. No score between these two. It doesn't feel like the kind of game that's going to be a goal fest. It might just be that one moment of magic, one moment of inspiration is enough to separate the two at the end of 90 minutes. Issa couldn't find McLennan off on a run then. Here's Todd Smith, clever to move away from a couple of players. Tries to find Issa. He's done well, Sonny Issa. Wide it goes to Cole. Can he haul it in? He does just, Jackson Cole. Still there, Jackson Cole. And eventually it rebounds off his shins and will go behind for a goal kick. But Jackson Cole starting to find his feet on starting debut. He has had a game already this season, Jackson Cole. And actually scored a goal in that game. It was the 8-0 thumping of Nomads. Eight different goal scorers that day in an 8-0 win for Christchurch United. One of them was Jackson Cole, who made his club debut that day. This is his starting debut and second appearance of the season. McLennan again. He looks a robust, vigorous type of player and... Shirt nine for the Blues. Sure many of you tuning in will be seeing these players for the first time, particularly those watching from outside of the Canterbury region. It's great to have you with us right across New Zealand and around the world as well. Ball played through, looking for Issa. Cut out at the back there by Stora. 
and he gets a uh, encouraging remark from a member of the crowd in front of us. Schwartz goes back to Knight and then gets it back. Very composed player, Tom Schwartz. He's seen it all before. Vastly, vastly experienced player. Still only 32 years old. He seems to have been around for about 30 years, Tom Schwartz, but still in his early 30s. Misplaced pass and Lapsley latches onto it. McLennan is off on a run down the left. Cross into Issa. Is it going to fall to Peterson? No. Cleared by Cash Tech. But Joel Peterson just sniffed a chance there as McLennan broke down the left. Just feels as though Christchurch United are the most likely early in this one. McLennan tracking across the box. Spain. Cole. Trickery from Cole. And he wins his side another corner. So there's starting to be a bit of pressure exerted here by the home side. Cash Tech have only conceded the four goals and six matches so far this season. If you count the Chatham Cup, it's seven matches. They didn't concede against Nomads last week either. They've always been very, very proud of the way they defend. Schwartz and Storer and Knight and the rest. But Lapsley's gone across to try and bend this one in. He floats it, rather. Stora deals with it OK. Going to fall to Matt Todd-Smith. Well, it was until Schwartz stepped in. Back it comes to Issa and flag up on the far side. Sonny Issa coming back from an offside position and the situation is diffused. It's got a good pace to it, though, the game. High energy. Todd-Smith. He rides the challenge, finds Cole. Now Spain, Todd Smith again, and Cole, little triangles over on the far side there of the Christchurch Football Centre. Rather aimless ball played forward that time, and no trouble for... The Kashmir Tech side to defuse that one. Apologies for a small break there in proceedings as we recalibrated things at our end. No score, approaching the 20-minute mark. Kashmir Tech are doing a lot of the defending early in this one. Every time they bring it forward, they seem to lose it. But now they've got an opportunity, perhaps, to attack down this right-hand side. They will do so through Tung. Man outside is Richards. He's forced into the corner. Can he get something out of this? It was a uh, difficult situation for him, but it's there again for Cash Tech. Can they score against the run of play somewhat? Here comes Schwartz, that educated left foot of his, out to Richards. Man rating outside his tongue, but Richards delivers himself to the far post. Arriving over there was Key and Donkers. And goalkeeper there, Scott Morris, caught a little bit of no man's land. All of a sudden, we're all the way down the other end where Stora has to defuse the situation as Daniel McLennan head after it. So they haven't had a heck of a lot of opportunity, Kashmir Tech, but that was an interesting ball into the area, which Key and Donkers couldn't quite get on the end of. Four goals already this season for Key and Donkers, the Cash Tech striker. Cole, tricky feet from the teenager. 
Just lacking a little bit of an end product at the moment, Christchurch United. Lots of endeavour, lots of energy, but nothing which has really troubled Danny Knight and goal for Cash Tech too much. Blake Weston's gone across and just puts this one up into the Christchurch sky. Taking no chances over there, Blake Weston. This is Sam Richards for Cash Tech. Matheson can't control it. Having trouble getting into the game. Lyle Matheson early in this one. or I say early, it's now almost midway through the first half. McLennan forward towards Sonny Issa. Flag went up. Stora was tracking him all the way and seemed to have pretty good body position anyway, Andrew Stora, but wouldn't have mattered because Sonny Issa had got the wrong side of the last defender as that ball was played through to him. Prolific season already for Sonny Issa. Eight goals for him so far. Easily the leading goal scorer in Christchurch United's side. McClay and McLennan with three goals each so far. Here's Matheson. Gets a little shove from McLennan. And referee spotted it. Was just waiting to see whether progress would be made. They're trying to take a quickly cash tech, but referee Ben O'Connor wants them to take it back because the ball was rolling. You could see the uh, universal symbol for that. The rotating hands from Ben O'Connell. That might actually work out okay for Cash Tech. They can set something up here. Tongue and Matheson over the ball. Matheson's going to leave Tongue to it. And uh, he makes a run himself. Lyle Matheson across the six-yard box. Good clearance by Grover. Cash Tech almost caught Christchurch United napping there. And foul breaks it all up but as Matheson walked away from Tung I think Christchurch United just switched off momentarily ball played through to Matheson to get the cross into the six yard box and Riley Grover was the most aware and avoided any embarrassment for the side in blue approaching the 24 minute mark no score yet in Christchurch McLennan again chases after that one. He uh, seems to have a big engine. Daniel McLennan, 30-year-old from Scotland. Just pointing out to the referee that perhaps Luke Tung is taking some liberties there with where he's taking the throw from. Nice little turn from Donkers nearly into space, but he was crowded out. Some sure-footed defending here from the likes of Weston and... Grover, Lapsley helping it forward towards Issa, just in a pocket of space. Schwartz had got himself into a slightly uh, unusual position there, and it looked as though if Issa had brought that down and moved it away, he might have just about had a one-on-one. -on -one. Schwartz was appealing for handball against Issa. In the end, it came to nothing, so no free kick required. Stora. Donkers puts his head down and chases after it. Back to Morris, though, for the easy clearance. Easter looking to flick it on to somebody. McLennan had cut inside, but as he came across, wasn't quite able to get on the end of it. Just a little bit of a conversation in the middle of the park there between a couple of players. Here's Donkers trying to get the better of Grover. Very tight again, and you can see how quickly the likes of McClay and the others are on to... Any bit of possession Cash Tech have in the middle of the park. They're like terriers as they close in on the ball carrier or the uh, man in possession. Oh, mistouched by Tung here. Can McLennan take advantage? He couldn't quite. I think it surprised him a bit that Tung gave it away. Lots of calls for fouls at the moment. Referee O'Connell is letting most things go, which you don't mind. All we need is consistency. Donkers has peeled away. Weston went with him all the way and dropped a shoulder into him and then had to back heel it to keep it from going behind for a corner. Will be a throw for Kashmir Tech. Right down in the corner of the Christchurch Football Centre. Matheson offers but doesn't get it. Now he does. Just a bit unsighted as that ball's right down in the corner. Now camera can't quite see past a couple of the spectators here, but it is going to be a corner. 
which Lyle Matheson has gone across to take with that left foot of his. Chance for Kashmir Tech to open the scoring. Matheson's delivery is across the six-yard box, but no man attacking it at the near post. And Scott Morris, that's just catching practice for him. And you'd have to think that Paul Eiffel would be the happier of the two coaches after 27 minutes here in Christchurch. His side has certainly dominated possession and territory, if not goal-scoring opportunities. As I say, that's about the one thing we're missing here in the Christchurch United performances, any worthwhile or significant end product. They might now, though, through McLennan. Issa goes on the outside. Peterson raiding into the inside right channel. Didn't find him as Schwartz came across and put it behind for a corner. So Joel Peterson looks like a lively attacking midfielder to me, running into that channel there at inside right. Another corner coming the way of Christchurch United. Weston comes forward. Todd Smith just on the edge in 22. McLennan in the arc. Lapsley, the left back, is going to go and bend this one in. The last one he took from this side was a rather floated cross. Arm up over there, which will no doubt indicate something. We'll soon find out what. Cole scampers across. Set move to the edge of the area. It's across to Matt Todd Smith. Wouldn't really sit for him, so they'll recalibrate. McClay out to Lapsley. McClay with the shot. Never going to trouble Danny Knight. So set move there from Christchurch United from the corner, but just get the feeling that intended target of all that might have been Matt Todd Smith just on the edge of the penalty area, but the ball didn't quite find its way to him. And when it did, it took, unusually on an artificial surface, a bit of a bobble. So it didn't turn out the way they would have hoped. Cash Tech put under pressure here, and they're going to have to scamper back to save this from going out for a corner. They do clear it, and it's actually turned out okay for them. Almost through good luck rather than good management. Now it's gone out. With Jacob Richards unable to keep it in the field of play. Peterson, now Issa. Issa spurns the opportunity to give it to Lapsley. Instead, he goes back into the middle of the park. Grover. Attack breaks down and Matheson will have to run from his own half. Doesn't get the opportunity to because, again, he's set upon and it's passed all the way back to Scott Morris. He, on his weaker left foot, just helps it down the line. Flicked on by Lapsley. One back by Cash Tech. Here's Richards. Sam Lapsley in the middle there couldn't make progress with it, but McLennan might down the left-hand side, Daniel McLennan. A lot of friends around at the moment. Gets a helping hand from Peterson. Matt Todd Smith. This is McClay. East is all the way over on the right wing now. In fact, that's Spain over there. Matt Todd Smith tracking across the box. Lapsley. Another corner coming the way of Christchurch United right on the half-hour mark. Well, the cohesiveness is starting to build in the front third for Christchurch United. Issa, McLennan, Peterson getting a lot of touches. Matt Todd Smith lending a hand. Jackson Cole with his trickery up and down the right. Once again, a set move at corner kick time. Peterson looking for the return pass. Instead, Issa steps in. It'll be another corner. So Paul Eiffel will be certain that his side deserves something for all their endeavour, all of their possession, all of their set pieces. Can they find the game's opening goal? This one with plenty of elevation over towards the far side of the penalty area, bouncing around, hacked away by Cash Tech. Jordan Spain wanders forward to take the throw. Crosshairs United really have set up camp and Cashman Technicals half of the football field. 
McLennan again looking to cause havoc in the penalty area. Might get another opportunity now. Calls for handball. Ball is cleared. I just wonder whether the referee thought about that and then decided against the handball call. Ben O'Connell, he's let play go on. Riley Grover has been a an ever-present in this Christchurch United side. The young centre-back chasing back here to try and make things difficult. Now, Donk has got a shove on the back there from Blake Weston. Went down in a bit of a heap, and even though Blake Weston protests his innocence, referee O'Connell says, no, nope, that'll be a free kick. So another opportunity now, perhaps, for Cash Tech to set something up. Lyle Matheson doesn't mind the look of it on his left foot. Tom Schwartz has gone all the way over there just to inquire of the referee something. Not sure what. Got the free kick, so not sure that any further sanction was needed. Maybe he was asking the question about a possible yellow card for Blake Weston. Matheson in the gloves with a knot of players at the far post to aim at. Scott Morris just checks the position of the wall and makes sure, makes sure that his near post is protected. What can Matheson do with this one? Again, it's too close to the goalkeeper. And the advancing players on the far side have every, every right, really, to blow their cheeks out. And a bit of frustration there because they'd all come forward from the back, the likes of Schwartz and Storer and others. And yet the delivery was far too close to Scott Morris. Raking pass over towards Peterson. He can't quite bring it down. Luke Tung gets his body in the way and shepherds it back to Danny Knight. Thought about a short pass, but then decided, no, I'll just bang it long. Flicked on. Donkers can't get on the end of it. Once again, it's picked up in midfield by McClay. Paul Eiffel has got this Christchurch United team set up really nicely with Daniel McClay sitting at the base of the midfield. They've got a bit of work to do now, though, as Donkers has found a bit of space, but that is disappointing from Key and Donkers, and he knows it holds the hand up an apology because he was in a bit of space there in a fairly dangerous position, and he couldn't find a delivery. Here's Joel Peterson for Christchurch United. Running at a couple of defenders. Issa looking to set up McClay. No one's drilled long, and even though Donkers starts to jog after it, I don't think there's any real danger of him hauling that one in. It looks like uh, Paul Eiffel's got his bases covered here. As far as the formation is concerned, the flat back four, McClay sitting in front, Peterson and Todd Smith. Slightly further advanced, and Issa, McLennan and Cole looking good in the attacking third. You can see why they've done so well this season. East is all the way back and does well to free up a marauding Joel Peterson. Forward towards McLennan. It was just too high for him. I wonder whether he might have preferred that at his feet. Ten minutes to go until halftime here in Christchurch. No score yet. Neither goalkeeper really troubled. Christchurch United have certainly had the better of it. But Danny Knight has kept his sheet clean, as has Scott Morris at the other end. Storer thinks about a long pass. Instead, opts to bring Richards in. Matheson, nice little touch. And shot from Donkers. Blocked by Grover. So it's almost but not quite for Cash Tech as well. Good to see them starting to fashion an opportunity or two. In the meantime, Christchurch United take the throw quickly through Issa. McLennan has climbed all over by Richards. Issa. Todd Smith. Now Spain. Pass aimed for Peterson, but intercepted. And now it's almost half a chance there for K 
Lucky and Donkers to break away. Richards turns his back on it and gets the rebound. There might be a sub coming here as their yep, sub on the far side. And it's Jackson Cole. He gets a round of applause for his debut. It's only lasted 37 minutes, but I think that's a, uh, a pretty happy coach there, Paul Eiffel, as Jackson Cole completes a fairly solid sort of 37 minutes and makes way. We'll just get a look at the uh, substitute for you. Looks like it's a straight swap over there on the right-hand side of the front three. Ball lumped forward, and uh, Richards kind of lost sight of that for a second. Tongue came across and cleared it okay. That's broken the way of Lyle Matheson. He's got Donkers up with him, if he can find him with a pass. Plenty of blue shirts, though, to try and hold his progress. Here's Lyle Matheson with the shot, blocked by Weston. And Todd Smith's going to haul that one in before it can go behind for a corner. Lyle Matheson does look and feel like the most likely source of attacking threat for Cash Tech. He's got Kean Donkers up there with him. But Matheson is the most obvious source of creativity, really, in this Cash Tech midfield. Cut out again before it can reach Donkers. Once again, the ball forward for McLennan to chase. Once again, Stora is there. Stora and McLennan, toe for toe. And in the end, Danny Knight had to come out and put his body on the line. Behind it goes for a corner. Good crowd in attendance here at Yoldhurst. A crisp evening, you might call it, in Christchurch. Ball towards the fast stick, and good defending there, but it's not all the way clear. Bouncing around, and away it goes almost. McLennan thought about bringing it down and getting a shot away, or tried to. Spain is back now, pursued all the way by Jacob Richards. Played forward, and Easton knew he was offside, so didn't play at the ball. Approaching the final five minutes here in Christchurch. I'll tell you what, Kean Donkers is a pretty willing runner. He doesn't stick around in the centre forward position. He peels away to the right. He drops deep. He's a a pretty energetic attacker, Kean Donkers, the 17-year-old. A oh, lovely little back heel into the path of Peterson from McLennan. Here's Joel Peterson. Is this the moment? Well, he kind of got caught in two minds, really. Confirmation of the substitute, Edward Wilkinson, into the game there, and almost at the first time of asking, Ed Wilkinson. Looking to be fed there by Peterson. It didn't come to fruition. McLennan again. He's been all action in this first half. Does well to get it off to Issa. Christchurch United come again. Sonny Issa, he's forced wide, and then Knight makes a good save at his near post. Had to as well because Wilkinson was sniffing about there. Bit of sloppy defence there from Cash Tech, which is most uncharacteristic for them. Todd Smith. Wilkinson plays it in. No problem bringing it away for Cash Tech that time, but unfortunately the clearance, the only man forward is Kean Donkers. He's not getting a heck of a lot, a lot of support, really. Here's another look at that opportunity for Sonny Issa. He came to Danny Knight probably a little quicker than he imagined it might, but experienced goalkeeper that he is, clutched it to his body and snuffed out the danger. Todd Smith with a raking pass out towards the right. Wilkinson's not going to haul that in. He might be quick, but he's not that quick, the 21-year-old. 
Three goals in five matches so far this season for Ed Wilkinson, the substitute. Jackson Cole, the man replaced. Just a bit of a lull as Danny Knight lines up this goal kick. Didn't seem to be any reason for the hesitation, but we're underway again. Once again, it's Christchurch United who pick up the scraps. Lovely ball down the line from McLennan to Peterson. In and out he goes. Peterson, clever feet. Still there for Joel Peterson, is it? No. Well defended by Cash Tech. Tang and... Richards back there. And eventually cleared. Once again, it's Key and Donkers, who's a bit of a lone ranger up there, unfortunately, for Cash Tech. Two and a half minutes to go, plus stoppages at the end of this first half. Can't imagine there'll be too much time to add. We've had next to no stoppages at all, really. A couple of players down for a brief period of time, but... Here's Wilkinson. He gets across, right across the face of goal. Nobody really gambled there from Christchurch United. Back across it comes. McLennan can't gather. Away by Sam Richards. Bit of thinking to do for Dan Schwartz. Coach of Kashmir Tech. Paul Eiffel, as I've said a couple of times, will be pleased, but not overjoyed because all the possession and territory hasn't actually resulted in any goals. Issa perhaps with the closest effort testing Knight a short time ago. Not that that was really a shot, but a, uh, a dangerous attacking move. Historia. And the ball was too far ahead of Luke Tung. <clears throat> so we might get a little final flourish here at the end of the first half from Christchurch United, although it is broken up on that occasion. Peterson. Wilkinson. Lifts it forward towards McLennan, bouncing around, but Danny Knight sees that bounce comfortably into his hands, no problem. <coughs> 30 seconds to go, plus stoppages here in the first half. No score between the hosts, Christchurch United, and their visitors, Kashmir Tech. And further frustration for Kian Donkers as he is flagged offside. Without wanting to labour the point, he really is all on his own up there most of the time. Kian Donkers. We haven't seen a lot of Declan Tyndall. Most of the play's been over this side. Jacob Richards has had his moments. Lyle Matheson as well, but there's nothing really that's troubled Scott Morris overly at all. Into added time at the end of the first half. Is there one final flourish before the Oranges for Christchurch United, perhaps? Issa. Issa towards the far post and very, very calmly brought down by Sam Richards. That part wasn't quite so calm as he bangs it into Wilkinson. Results okay, though. It's going to be a goal kick. You know you've got a calm player on your hands when he brings down a cross in his own six-yard box, a defensive player, that is. So that might just about be all she wrote in this first half. Ben O'Connell with a quick check of the watch. And that'll be the end of the first half here at Christchurch Football Centre in Christchurch, home of Christchurch United, who have had the better of a pretty absorbing first half. Not too many chances to speak of, but plenty of possession and territory for the men in blue. Kashmir Tech have had their moments and for the most part defended pretty well.
But there's a bit of thinking to do for both coaches as they try to find an opening goal at some stage in the second half of this match. Half time here in Christchurch. Christchurch United nil. Cashmere Technical nil.
Welcome back to Christchurch Football Centre in Christchurch. Half-time here between Christchurch United, the home side, and Cashmere Technical. Top of the table clash in the Southern League for 2022. No score. Christchurch United, though, have certainly had the better of the first half, or did have the better of the first half. The two teams about to make their way back out onto the playing surface here at the Christchurch Football Centre. It hasn't got any warmer, I can tell you that. The temperature now has dropped below 5 degrees Celsius. Once you add a little bit of that westerly into the mix, the Met Service is telling us it feels like two degrees out in the open spaces of Christchurch's football centre this evening. No problem for the players. They'll get back out there and get amongst it. Spectators are rugged up. Beanies and hoodies and gloves and scarves are well and truly in evidence. Referees just keeping cool as they wander back out. Ben O'Connell there, ball in hand. So the approach of both teams will be very interesting to observe. As mentioned a couple of times in the first half, there wasn't a heck of a lot happening in the attacking third for Kashmir Technical in large parts of that first half. Really just seemed to be banged forward towards Key and Donkers and the hope that he might get something on the end of it or fashion something from it wasn't to be the case. Declan Tyndall here in 21, close to camera, just having a chat to Edward Wilkinson. Didn't see a heck of a lot of Declan Tyndall in the first half. Jacob Richards was more active up and down the right, so let's hope for more from Declan Tyndall in the second. Christchurch United, I think, will be reasonably happy with the way things played out. The only thing they're missing is a goal for all their dominance. All in blue, kicking from left to right in the second half. Cash Tech in the yellow, green and white heading back towards the left of your screen. Just checking on the far side as to whether there'll be any changes made at half time. Haven't picked up on any. Final bits of second half preparation are just about complete. Referee O'Connell looks happy enough. Underway in the second half. Christchurch United all in blue. Kicking left to right. Kashmir Tech heading back the other way. Just reminding you both teams with a 100% league record so far this season. Christchurch United seven wins from their seven games. Cashmere technical six victories from their six outings. They've both scored 29 goals. Both pretty frugal at the back. And that's uh, certainly been an evidence here. But is one of these two teams able to find an opening goal to break this game open? Christchurch United are going to have the first opportunity through a set piece out on the left wing side. McLennan had uh, battled away and got through, but 
Referee O'Connell decided to come back for the free kick. The build down the left-hand side across Chichester United, but that final pass there from Issa was a bit heavy, and you could see he was annoyed with himself there, just giving himself a little telling off there as he couldn't quite find a teammate with the pass. Right up there in the penalty arc, Sonny Issa looking to put pressure on the rear guard of Cash Tech. And it might actually fall their way here. Man's gone down over there. In the meantime, it was a pretty heavy challenge. It might have been McLennan over there. Yeah, he's just struggling a little bit at the moment. Daniel McLennan after a pretty heavy challenge. He won the ball. He seems to be moving okay now, so it would be a loss if Paul Eiffel had to make a change there because he has been very good, Daniel McLennan. Looking to add to his three goals so far this season. Here he is, McLennan. Rebounds out and Wilkinson picks it up. Once again, the final pass not quite there, but they battle away and win it back. Joel Peterson and Luke Tung can't clear it at the first attempt decides to put the big right boot to it at the second and just about gets the desired result nodded forward by Matheson once again it doesn't stick in the front third this one's forward towards Issa whistle went there I thought it was a whistle of the referee I think it might have been in the crowd here's Issa he's still battling away there I wonder whether a couple of the Cashmere Tech players might have stopped there as well. I certainly thought that was the referee's whistle. They played on, though, and eventually scrambled it clear to Cash Tech. It'll be a throw right down in the corner for Benjamin Lapsley. Issa. Lapsley delivers plenty of elevation on it. It's allowed to bounce and then hit it half away. Still there just for... McLennan, his shot though on the turn, does take a deflection, so I'll earn another set piece with which uh, Joel Peterson will jog over to address. So the second half has started in much the same way as the first half played out for large periods, and that's with Christchurch United on attack and Kashmir Tech defending stoutly. Peterson's corner, near post delivery, little flick from Issa, gets a second opportunity blocked. Is there a third opportunity just wide? That's probably about as good an opportunity as they've had. Sunny Issa, first shot blocked by Tung, second just wide of the post. So good defending from Luke Tung at the first time of asking. And Sunny Issa just off target with his second attempt. Sam Richards wants to get things going for Kashmir Tech two balls on the pitch, referee wants one of them removed Spain eventually obliges here's Schwartz an educated left foot into the penalty area, is Matheson almost fashioned a shot there, Lyle Matheson Tyndall tracking across field and has the ball taken off him, East is off on a run, he's trying to stay the right side of his defender Instead, it's Wilkinson. Here's Ed Wilkinson. Two good chances in the space of a couple of minutes in this early stanza in the second half. That time it was Ed Wilkinson. Brought it down nicely, but couldn't find the target. Danny Knight came out to make it difficult for him and maybe did just enough. Good energetic start to the second half from Christchurch United. Five minutes gone in the second period. Still no score. Here's Richards. Sam Richards, that is. He just about has his pocket picked by Edward Wilkinson, who had that chance a moment or so ago.
Donkers. Now Angus. Just as a little bit of cohesion seemed to be building for Kashmir Tech, it all kind of came to nothing. Well, Kashmir Tech have been so dominant for so long in Canterbury football circles. There is real desire in the Christchurch United camp for that dominance to be certainly challenged. And they're making a pretty good statement tonight here. Having said that, still nil-nil on the scoreboard. It only takes one moment of magic from the likes of a Lyle Matheson or a Jacob Richards and things could be very different. Here is Matheson in towards Donkers. Missed uh, clearance, but then the sliding clearance came from Western, I think, as Spain missed out the first time. Still there for Cash Tech. Simon Richards helps it in. Scott Morris gathers. So that was an example of what I was talking about. The ball in. Jordan Spain unable to clear. And but for the sliding challenge from Blake Weston, Kashmir Tech might have been in there. Here's Jacob Richards again. Tongue. Will win another throw down that right hand side. And towards Matheson. Weston has the better of him. A battle going on as Issa breaks away. Out wide left to McLennan. Making up room in the centre is Wilkinson. It's a cross goal. Wilkinson sees it run across his body. Tracks it down. Wilkinson across the six-yard box. Schwartz was calmly in the right position. Good exciting opening to the second half. Morris goes long. Issa trying to seize on to the flick from Spain and wins a free kick. Just a nip of the heels there. They want to get going quickly. Wilkinson's been good since his appearance late in the first half. Here's Sonny Issa looking for room. Matt Todd Smith, heavy first touch, but what a second! What a goal from Matt Todd Smith! I thought the ball had got away from him. Not a bit of it. The Christchurch United captain, Matt Todd Smith, blasts it home for 1 0. His second goal of the season, and it's everything that Christchurch United deserve. Issa did well in the build up. Quite a heavy touch from Todd Smith, but look at him at that one. Danny Knight, no chance. And the captain puts his side into a 1 0 lead. Cracking goal to break this contest wide open from Matt. Todd Smith. Well, they toiled away and toiled away for all of the first half and the first 10 or so minutes of the second without any joy, but when the goal came, it was an absolute cracker. Kashmir Tech looking for an instant response, though. This is Sam Richards. And Spain puts it behind for a corner. In fact, my apologies, it's a goal kick as Spain couldn't get a foot on it to try and keep the attack going. 10 minutes gone, second half. Christchurch United into a 1-0 lead. Belted long by Morris. McLennan battling away in front of his coach, Paul Eiffel. And you can see Eiffel with the hands raised there. Eko Quainu alongside the uh, coaching partnership of Christchurch United there. Paul Eiffel just making a point to referee Ben O'Connell. Won't see Paul Eiffel out there tonight. He's not listed among the substitutes. Understand he might have tweaked a hammy last week, so 
He has played a little bit than Paul Eiffel as a player coach. He's appeared in five matches, all as a substitute. Scored a goal as well, which is usually the case when he plays for any length of time. Now the shot comes in, and it's gone in! Cash Tech do have an equaliser almost immediately. Well, the ball came in along the carpet. I fancy the first shot might have been parried, but when it was, it was into the path of Fraser Angus. Let's have another look at it. It came across, pushed out it was by goalkeeper Morris, but Johnny on the spot was Fraser Angus. So Christchurch United's lead lasted less than two minutes. Cash Tech have squared it here at the Christchurch Football Centre. And after all that time without any goals, we've had two and two minutes. So Matt Todd Smith in the 54th. Fraser Angus now replying for Cash Tech in the 56th. His second goal, rather his third goal of this season, and this is seventh game. So he's been pretty handy from midfield, Fraser Angus, and he's added another one here. And we're all square again. So Matt Todd Smith probably thought his goal would be a decisive one, given the rather Spartan nature of the first half of this game as far as goals were concerned, but he couldn't possibly have imagined that his goal would only have his side into the lead for about 100 seconds. Weston thought about a pass back to his goalkeeper, Morris. Instead, they'll go forward. Spain. As well in a tight area, Jordan, Spain. Put forward by Todd Smith. Away by Richards. Eventually, it'll be a throw for the visitors. Got a bit of wind in their sails now. Matheson hurls it forward. Tyndall chases. Morris gathers. I like wonder on another look whether Scott Morris might be a bit disappointed with not holding on to that low shot. He pushed it out into the path of Fraser Angus and it was a fairly straightforward finish for Cashmere Tech's number 18. It seems to have got the uh, confidence soaring now in the Cash Tech side as they just seem to have a new spring in their step. Spain will nod that one calmly back to his goalkeeper, Scott Morris. Bit of a character, Scott Morris. You only have to have a look at his Instagram account and some of his posts to see that. He's obviously a bit of a comedian. They're different goalkeepers, aren't they? Just the seventh goal he's conceded in uh, seven and a half games this season. In fact, he's uh, only played six of the previous seven, so he's well, well and truly established, though, as the number one, number one at the football club. Approaching the hour mark here. The game has sprung to life. Goals by Todd Smith for Christchurch United and Angus for Cash Tech. Christchurch United again, break forward through McLennan down the left-hand side. Ball in towards Issa, brings it down brilliantly, Sonny Issa! What a goal that is! An absolute crack up, Issa! Daniel McLennan raiding down the left, ball into Issa. Look at this control and finish. Beautiful from the Nigerian. Just exactly the right touch off the chest to take it into space, to buy himself a millisecond of time, and then the assured left-footed finish from Sonny Issa. His ninth goal of this season. We've had three goals in six minutes, and all of a sudden Christchurch United are ahead again. Direct, incisive play from the men in blue. Daniel McLennan almost inevitably involved. He has been very influential out there in the first hour of this game. His cross to Issa was a good one, but 
He still had a bit of work to do. There was certainly no foregone conclusion to get that in the net. But the chest into space and the left-footed finish. Just picture perfect from Sunny Issa. And Christchurch United 2-1 up. Well, after a, at times, cagey first half, the second half has been spectacular. And you get the feeling it's not finished yet as Tyndall gets a ball across. Dealt with at the back by Christchurch United. Issa sprinting after that one. Christchurch United aren't happy with 2-1. You can see they want to get things going and even extend this lead. A win here for... Christchurch United would of course be their eighth in succession. That would move them to 24 points. Kashmir Tech would stay on 18 and have played one fewer game. And as I said at the uh, start of the commentary, these are the two, it almost seems inevitable, who will progress to the championship round, but there's certainly some bragging rights locally to be had. Here's McLennan again, all action. Been so impressed with Daniel McLennan. Just his energy and the way he never gives his defender time to think. There's some pretty handy players in this Christchurch United side. It'll be a good side that beats them. Matheson, he gets the shot away. Weston with a header away. Wilkinson back and hits the referee. They'll have to stop for that. Ben O'Connell got himself in the way, as is the rule these days if the ball hits the referee he's pretty much duty bound to stop play and drop it at the feet of the team that was disadvantaged and we carry on Issa again the target of the raking long pass that one cut out okay by Cash Tech Matheson Schwartz stepping into midfield as has been his trademark over his time playing in New Zealand. Wide right it goes now. This is a better opportunity for Cash Tech, or was, until Jacob Richards had it taken away from him. Peterson. Once again, it goes long, and McLennan will be a willing chaser. There's no doubt about that. Does well to keep it in, pushes it past Tung, and is brought down by Luke Tung. And that's going to be the first yellow ticket of the evening, and it goes the way of Luke Tung. First yellow card of the season for the Kashmir Tech defender. And that's exactly what I was talking about with Daniel McLennan. You simply cannot <laughs> relax for a moment when he is your man. And Luke Tung there. Unable to hold him up by fair means. Resorted to foul means. And picks himself up a yellow card. So the upshot of it all is a set-piece situation for Christchurch United. A third goal now would be exactly what the doctor ordered as far as they're concerned. Benjamin Lapsley is lining this one up. He's got bragging rights at the moment over older brother Sam. Drilled towards the far post. Weston was the target. Was never going to be able to stop that before it went behind. So... Not quite the delivery Benjamin Lapsley was after. Here they come again. Christchurch United. This might fall the way of Wilkinson. Not quite. Danny Knight is out together. Richards can't keep it in down this left-hand side. The Christchurch United fans let them know all about it. McClay helped that one forward, but it eventually bounced its way through to Danny Knight. Still plenty of time left for Cash Tech. 25 minutes plus stoppages, so no need to panic just yet. Still a full suite of substitutes to use as well, but an attacking position here, perhaps. And it comes, and the goal scorer, Angus, it's diverted wide and kept in just over on this near side. Back across the six-yard box. Crosses United having a bit of trouble clearing that, actually. It's Matheson over there, put the ball in. He'll now stay out that side for the resulting corner. 
They made pretty hard work of that, actually. Christchurch United and trying to clear it. Referee just wants the uh, boys behind the goal and the balls behind the goal to be cleared. I think he's just telling some of those spectators, the younger ones, to watch the game from somewhere else, perhaps. Matheson's going to take this corner. Delivery is pretty good. Stora with a looping header. And Scott Morris just for a moment there looked as though it might trouble him. Long throw and wellied into touch by Luke Tung. Sub coming for Cash Tech and it'll be Lockie McIsaac into the action. Declan Tyndall makes way for him. So Lockie McIsaac, the 23-year-old, fourth appearance of the season. Just a bit of work being done in the middle of the park there on Tom Schwartz, by the looks of things, from the Cash Tech physio. James McCormick is the man out there, helping Dan Schwartz with a bit of tape around the left knee or left thigh. So a bit of a break in play, a chance for both teams to catch a breath and steal themselves for what will now be the final quarter of this match. Schwartz looks like he's okay. He's just got to go off to come back on again, as is the guideline. Back to 11 v 11. And away we go again. Here's Matt Todd Smith, the scorer of the opening goal this evening. Just a pass out towards Wilkinson. Richards in the way. Good work by Sam Richards, although he is tackled by Wilkinson. And it'll be a throw deep in Kashmir Tech territory. Forward towards Donkers. Once again, he can't make it stick. McLennan. Well, he's come through on tongue there. Now, that will be a yellow card, I think, for Daniel McLennan. The two players clashing again. The last time they did it was Tung, who got the yellow card. This time, Daniel McLennan picks up the yellow ticket. I just wonder whether that might have been a bit of payback. Paul Eiffel has a word in the ear of Daniel McLennan. Second yellow card of the season for the Scott. Luke Tung's OK. So they've given each other one each now. Both picked up a yellow card. Even Stevens. Nice little flick on. Is there something at the end of it here for Cash Tech? No. And a chance perhaps to break down the other end for Christchurch United, although Kashmir Tech are back in pretty good numbers. Wilkinson's going to sprint after that one, but easily mopped up. He's supporting a little bit of pressure on Danny Knight. And another yellow card brandished there. And that one goes the way of Benjamin Lapsley. So the booking starting to mount now. Lapsley joins McLennan and Tung in referee O'Connell's notebook. Second yellow card of the season for Ben Lapsley. Here are Cash Tech again. Once again, it's snuffed out by the Christchurch United defenders. Cash Tech looking for a way back into this game with 20 minutes remaining. With an intricate passing down this left-hand side. Donkers has come deep to get it. He just about holds on to it this time. Kian Donkers. Sam Lapsley. Brother Ben on the end of that one. So the two brothers, Sam 
and Ben. Another change coming. This one for Cash Tech as it is Samuel Lapsley's last action. Corey Vickers is into the game. I believe this to be his first appearance of this season. Corey Vickers. He's been a, uh, a constant presence in this cash tech side for a while, taking the place of Sam Lapsley. Vickers looking to get into the thick of things straight away. Dora. Luke Tung looking to switch the direction of play across to Sam Richards. He's set upon by Spain and also Wilkinson. Upshot is a throw for the home side. So no score at half-time. Matt Todd-Smith opened the scoring after nine minutes of the second half for Christchurch United. Two minutes later, Fraser Angus made it one all for Cash Tech. And then four minutes after that, Sonny Issa put Christchurch United back in front. So three goals in the space of six second-half minutes. And still all to play for here for both sides. Tung joining the attack. Matheson. Bit wasteful in the attacking third, but Matheson does well to win it back for the Cash Tech side. Fall in the middle of the park by Vickers, and it all broke down. McLennan and Issa both out towards the left-hand side. Issa's run into a fairly tight corner here, but gets out of it. Sonny Issa dancing along the touchline. And eventually it's into the hands of Danny Knight. Well, he didn't look favourite there, Sonny Issa, to hold on to that. But trickery and quick feet along the line there. And he just about troubled Knight and goal for the visitors. Change coming for Cash Tech again. Or in fact, it's a, a change rather for Christchurch United. Double change, in fact. Show Matheson and Mika Rambuka are on. And it looks like Peterson and Ben Lapsley perhaps are the two who are replaced. So it looks as though Show Matheson has slotted into that left back role, the 24 year old, fifth game of the season. And Mika Eli Rambuka, 20-year-old, three goals already this season, has taken the place of Joel Peterson. There he is, Rambuka there in 16, just on the halfway line. Planted forward towards Lockie McIsaac. He's done well to keep that in the substitute. Richards with a curling ball towards the far post. Goalkeeper Morris out to grab it as we tick inside the final 15 minutes here in Christchurch. Weston's ball forward is cut out. Paid forward now, though, towards the new man, Rabunka.
Remaining games in the Southern League this weekend. Coastal Spirit against Mosgiel. Dunedin City Royals against Green Island. Ferry Mead Bays welcome Selwyn United and Nelson Suburbs playing host to Nomads United. All eyes, though, this round were on this game, as is usually the case when two teams at the top of the table, both unbeaten, come face to face. Christchurch United ahead at the moment, but don't count out this Kashmir Tech side. They have shown over many years resilience and spirit and an ability to get themselves out of tight situations. Often they're the ones who have their noses in front. It's actually not often they find themselves behind in football matches. And that's given away to Sonny Issa. He's looking like he might settle the contest here. Onto that left foot. Inside, outside, taken off him. And he just delayed his shot on goal for perhaps a touch too long there, Sonny Issa. Latched onto a loose pass from Lockie McIsaac. Who breathed a bit of a sigh of relief when it all came to nothing for the home side. Donkers and Spain together. Donkers does well. Richards. His pass is a bit short. Rebounds and... Christchurch United again break down the left-hand side. McLennan's off on a run. Ball into the main man, Issa. Shot is blocked. Still there, though. Blocked again. But our Booker is encouraged to shoot. So is Wilkinson, right on the edge. Ed Wilkinson. Wide it goes from the substitute, Edward Wilkinson, looking for his fourth goal of the season. Knows where the back of the net is. Couldn't quite find it that time. Schwartz just getting rid of a bit of unwanted tape, I think. The physio had just put all that tape around his knee and he's decided, you know what, I don't want it anymore. He's almost embarrassing Knight there. Schwartz brings it out and then brings Knight back into the action. What if Cash Tech got left in the final 11 minutes plus stoppages here? Angus, the goal scorer. McIsaac. Ball given away, though, and it's just another chance to break for Sonny Issa. He's onside. Can he loop it over the keeper? He has. Bouncing end over end. And Sonny Issa has scored his second. And Christchurch United's third of the evening and now giving them a very firm grip on this game indeed. Kashmir Tech were pushing forward, a misplaced pass, a long ball, and he kept himself on side. And as Danny Knight came out, he just lifted it over the top very cleverly. And Sonny Issa with a brace tonight and takes himself into double figures for the season. Christchurch United lead at 3-1 with 10 minutes to go. Well, you just cannot give a striker of Sonny Issa's class that type of opportunity and expect not to be punished. Danny Knight was caught a little bit of no man's land. He had to come out really, but once Sonny Issa got the right contact, there was only one place that ball was ending up and that was the back of his net. So... Kashmir Tech really are in a position now where they have to throw themselves forward to get anything out of this game, and that's going to leave them a little bit vulnerable. Issa was almost away again then. He's already got a hat-trick this season, Sonny Issa, back at the end of April in the 4-0 win over Selwyn United. He's sniffing another one here. Richards towards the far post, and... Scott Morris collected it pretty competently. He was challenged in the air there to the displeasure of some in the crowd. 
Lyle Matheson was the man climbing high to challenge Scott Morris. So Christchurch United will be absolutely delighted with this. As I said before, they want to be the new power base in football in Canterbury. They know that Kashmir Technical are the owners of that uh, crown, that throne at the moment. We're going to see another change here for Kashmir Technical. Alex Ballard, I think, is going to make his way on. Here's McIsaac. He's got Richards outside. Desperate for a goal to keep themselves in this game. Now Cash Tech. Wilkinson is back defending. Wins a throw off Sam Richards. Luke Tung unable to keep that one in. He thought he was nudged in the back by McLennan as he ran past. And those two have had a bit of a night of it, actually. McLennan and Tung, both booked. Both still going at one another deep into this game. Paul Eiffel up off his bench, as he has been for most of the night, the Christchurch United coach. Just needs his team to manage this one home now. Issa, though, I think has other ideas. He wants another goal. Six and a half minutes plus stoppage is left in Christchurch. Issa, a brace for Christchurch United to add to his captain, Matt Todd Smith's goal. Fraser Angus, the goal scorer for Kashmir Technical. The Christchurch United faithful cheering their side through the closing minutes of this one. Kashmir Technical are throwing just about everybody forward here for this latest free kick. Coach Dan Schwartz on the far side seems to approve of it. Just about every man in yellow is forward apart from Sam Richards. Lumped into the area. Bouncing around. And then the side footed effort calls for handball. Referee in close attendance. It was Corey Vickers with the shot that he thought cannoned into a Christchurch United defender's arm. Still there for the visitors. Bouncing around, and it's a corner. So the pressure stays on. Shot deflected there behind for a corner. Matheson again is in charge of set-piece situations. On his left foot. Right across the six-yard box, really, really competent goalkeeping from Scott Morris. That's what a team wants to see when they're under pressure. We'll play forward now towards Rabuka. East is in the area. Mikaeli Rabuka. Clever feet. Can he win something for his side? He has. No, he hasn't. Referee's changed his mind. Ben O'Connell there, I thought it initially signalled for a corner. Goal kick it was. Final sub coming for Christchurch United and it's a well-earned round of applause for McLennan. Joe Hall is into the action for the final four and a half minutes. Daniel McLennan has been excellent probably the best player on the pitch for me the most energetic the most likely to set something up for his team he's run all night and gets a well-deserved seat on the bench alongside the others who have done their job peterson and lapsley and cole 
and he can watch his side he hopes anyway manage this one to its conclusion it's looking more and more likely now as though that conclusion will be three points for Christchurch United Issa pushes it past his defender and sprints after it he's up by himself Sonny Issa sliding challenge was okay says the referee it was all ball Time the enemy now of the visitors. Free kick given away by Wilkinson. Richards wants to take it quickly. McIsaac bends a ball into the path of what he hoped would be a run from Donkers. Spain just hacks it away. Vickers in midfield, the substitute. Tang. Dora. No real urgency to get the ball forward from Kashmir Tech. Schwartz and the little touch off by McIsaac doesn't find its mark. Wilkinson down the line for Issa. Wilkinson latches on to the return pass. Here's Edward Wilkinson streaking forward. No one up with him at the moment, Ed Wilkinson. He might go by himself. What about this from Wilkinson? What a couple that is! Twisting and turning and beating man after man. He sprints back towards the crowd and why wouldn't you? Even Scott Morris is out to celebrate. What a goal from Edward Wilkinson to put a cherry on top of this performance from Christchurch United. Here he is here. He certainly had a bit of work to do as Stora came across. Inside and outside, inside tongue, and then tucked it away past Danny Knight. <laughs> Edward Wilkinson, that is a cracking goal, his fourth of the season. And Christchurch United have made a statement here tonight. 4-1 they lead. And there have been some brilliant goals among them. Matt Todd Smith's to open the scoring was a cracker from outside the area. Sonny Issa scored a brace. And that one from Wilkinson might just be the best of the lot. Back to the drawing board it'll be for Kashmir Tech as they've all to come here from Christchurch United. They might not be done. Into the final minute we go. And anyone watching this from anywhere around the country will be in no doubt that the Christchurch United of 2022 are well and truly a football team to be respected. There's almost no doubt now that they'll be involved in the championship round of the National League, although there's a chance here, perhaps, almost, for Fraser Angus to score his second of the night. Goalkeeper Scott Morris was having none of it. But Christchurch United will trouble a lot of teams further north in the championship round. The win here will be their eighth from eight. 24 points from a possible 24 they'll have. Go, go, go. 90 minutes are up here in Christchurch. Just the extra minutes to be added now. I haven't caught a glimpse of the fourth official just yet, but imagine it be the obligatory three perhaps there it is three minutes to be added at the end of this match you gonna start to think about those who have played well and it's hard to find anybody actually from Christchurch United who hasn't they've got a little bit more defending to do here and it's done well by Grover as I've said a couple of times Daniel McLennan superb Sonny Issa the goal scorer, Supreme, getting a couple to go to double figures for the season. Matt Todd Smith's been excellent in midfield as the captain of the side. And at the back, they've been pretty solid, really, with the likes of Weston and Grover in front of Scott Morris.
Celebrations have started here at Christchurch Football Centre. It all sort of petered out a little bit from Sunny Issa. Perhaps it had already gone across the line for a goal kick. Just an exercise and match management now for Christchurch United. They're going to take all three points here in convincing fashion. Put the rest of the league on notice. Now here's Hall. Joe Hall has taken it off his man. Slides it to Issa. And the pass not to the, quite to the feet of Sunny Issa. Who perhaps sniffed an opportunity for a hat trick there. Might still get one more chance. Todd Smith hasn't stopped running. Spain gets away from McIsaac. And eventually the referee decides that it's a free kick against Lockie McIsaac. There's been a lot of desire around the Christchurch United Football Club to return them to their former glory. Such a proud history, as I've mentioned a couple of times. Some fans who have been through thick and thin with this club and, well, maybe the uh, happy days are returning to Christchurch United with this latest crop led by Paul Eiffel and Nico Quainu. Into the final few seconds at the end of the match. Sonny East is quite happy to hold on to the ball over in front of his coach. Just an exercise and keep ball now for the home side. The three extra minutes have elapsed. Referee Ben O'Connell brings proceedings to an end. A very satisfactory night's work for the home side, Christchurch United. Handshakes and high fives all around on the far side as the two teams come together to congratulate or commiserate with one another. An excellent performance from Christchurch United. Let's have a look at some of the highlights. Here's the game's opening goal from Matt Todd Smith. A real specky from outside the area that flew past Danny Knight. But only a couple of minutes after that, Cash Tech will level the low shot along the carpet, parried into the path of Fraser Angus, who tucked it home for one apiece. And all of a sudden, there was hope among the visiting fans. Then this from Sonny Issa, a move into space and a low shot past Danny Knight to restore Christchurch United's lead. And Issa got his second and Christchurch United's third with 10 minutes to go, running onto a long ball and helping it over the top of Danny Knight. And the cherry on top, well and truly applied by Edward Wilkinson, twisting and turning this way and that, and then finding a finish into the far corner to the delight of his teammates, the crowd, and the man himself. An excellent performance from the home side. A statement not only to the Southern League, but the rest of the National League as well. They applaud the fans who have turned up on a chilly night. They've warmed it up for them. Christchurch United 4, Cashmere Technical 1.